Welcome to Rammer Hammer Training. In this video, we will walk you through setting up a Rammer Hammer. This video should be used in conjunction with the Rammer Operator's Manual provided with the hammer. Please read the Operations Manual before operating the hammer. These manuals can also be downloaded at rammer.com. If you need assistance or have any technical questions, please contact your local dealer. Before the hammer is installed on the carrier, let's review the main parts of the hammer. Housing. Mounting flange. Vibration dampening elements. Hose connections, including hydraulic pressure and return, automatic lubrication, and pressurized air. Pressure accumulator. Tool retaining mechanism. Lower tool bushing retainer. Lifting eye. Greasing device. Grease nipples. A selection of standard and special tools is available to suit each application. The correct type of tool must be selected to get the best possible working results and the longest lifetime for the tool and hammer. Chisel, moil point, and pyramid tools are best used to penetrate sedimentary and weak metamorphic rock like sandstone or concrete or for trenching and benching. Blunt tools are best used for igneous and tough metamorphic rock like granite, concrete, and breaking boulders without the tool penetrating the material. Super blunt tools should be used when tool wear is extensive in igneous or metamorphic rock like granite or gneiss, or boulder breaking without penetration. Before operating the hammer, it's important to verify the carrier is producing the proper hydraulic flow to the hammer. On the carrier, shut off the hydraulic flow ball valves. Remove the hammer hydraulic hoses if already installed. Install caps on the ends of the hammer hydraulic hoses to keep any debris from entering the hammer. Attach the flow meter whip hoses to the carrier hydraulic lines. On the carrier, open the hydraulic flow ball valves. The carrier hydraulic fluid must be at least 140 degrees Fahrenheit to properly calibrate the proper flow. Run the carrier until the minimum temperature is reached. Once the hydraulic fluid has reached 140 degrees Fahrenheit, use the flow meter to check for cracking and full relief pressure on the carrier. Next, using the flow meter, verify the hydraulic fluid gallons per minute flow and operating and return line pressures. Please check the operation manual for specific pressures required by your hammer and carrier. After the hydraulic flow and pressures have been set and verified via the flow meter, close the carrier's hydraulic ball valves, remove the flow meter whip lines, and install the hammer hydraulic hoses. Install the hammer to the carrier in the same manner as installing a bucket or other attachments. Finally, install a mechanical gauge on the hammer's flange port with an adapter to check the operating pressures of the hammer. If the hammer operating pressure is too low or too high, add or remove shims on the pressure adjusting valve until the desired number is reached. Please check the operation manual for the specific operating pressures required by your hammer and carrier. Your rammer hydraulic hammer is now ready for operation. Remember, your local dealer is available if you need assistance or have any technical questions.